So in the box uh, you get the tubing, you get the two releases uh, with the hose clamps to go around the bottle. Um, the bottle is actually, you get the uh, installation manual with a sticker, you have to follow those uh, installations. And here you have the bottle itself, here's the second card. You have um, the bottom mount with the uh, anti torpedo tabs at the end. And you get the over braid to go over the tubing. You get the nozzles, the uh, two inside nozzle, the three golden uh, nozzle for the engine bay, the fitting, the fireball pass through connector, and some zip ties. What is not included in the kit are uh, the dampers to go in between uh, the floor and uh, the brackets. So I got those uh, from Amazon. I'll put the link in the video description. And those are a mate uh, dampers. They come with the uh, uh, that goes to the floor, that goes to the bracket, and they come with the nuts at the bottom. So one of the main reasons we chose Novec over a triple F. Um, Novec doesn't freeze in winter. It's more of a gas than a, a foam, so it's also cleaner. Uh, when the uh, the bottle is smaller, it's lighter. You have less nozzles. Um, when you run E85, like we run in those cars for hill climbs, uh, the foam uh, in A triple F uh, reacts with the alcohol. Whereas Novec uh, is neutral with that, it's just a gas. The other main difference between the AFF system and the Novec system are the nozzles. So in a AFF system you have four uh, nozzles in the uh, uh, cabin and you have four nozzles in the engine bay. Uh, the Novec only uses two in the cabin and three in the engine bay. The reason is that the uh, the nozzles have a different design. So the blue ones that go in the cabin have a 180 degree angle and the um, yellow ones that go in the engine bay have a 160 degree uh, spray pattern. Um, whereas the, um, uh, the nozzles from the AFF system only have a, a 90 degree angle. So with less nozzles you can cover uh, a wider area. It's not really well represented by the picture here, but basically you have a 160 degree, almost uh, 180 degrees basically. So a uh, way wider spray pattern with less nozzles. But of course Novec is um, more expensive uh, than uh, a triple F, so it's uh, a trade-off. Today we are installing this uh, Lifeline Zero 360 Novec 3 kilogram system for the rally car. So first step is to secure the bottle to the brackets. Make sure the anti-torpedo tabs are flush with the uh, edge of the bottle to prevent the uh, bottle from sliding under impact. That's why also the bottle has to be uh, installed transversely to the car. You can't have it facing forward to the car so that it would slide and uh, and fly in the in the current case of a frontal impact. Uh, make sure you keep the label at the top. So that it can be uh, easily seen by the tech inspector to see the expiration date on it. Um, and uh, then you can place the bottle in the car uh, to drill the holes for the, uh, for the brackets. So one of the most convenient locations for the bottle is behind the seats if you have enough room. So just put the bottle in place and then take a sharpie you uh, mark the position of a uh, drilling holes. Be careful on the GD chassis. Under the car, you have this rib here. So either you'll have to get a hole on either side or push the bottle on one way so that you can have the ball on both sides. If you have uh, one of the studs that comes through here, you will have to get a super long stud to be able to, to go through uh, that rib. So uh, much better to straddle it. 
So here I drilled the four holes. I did attach the dampers on the bottle. What I'm gonna do before I insert the dampers in the in the holes, I'm gonna use some uh, sealant, any kind of sealant or cork will do. But I'm gonna apply here so that when I put the damper down, it will seal around the hole in the floor so that I don't have any leak. You can see here, I put the sealant on the bottom there so it will squeeze down. So here use red locked red Loctite to put the uh, nuts at the bottom and uh, cut the uh, the studs a little bit shorter so that they won't then be sticking out so much. Uh, here there's a reinforcement rib that you have on the GD, not here on the GC. So most of the heat stay are taken here before it grabs any of the uh, nuts here, but I would definitely recommend putting a piece of uh, HPD protection all along there. Um, to protect from impacts. As the bottle is in place, um, you can see I turn the uh, clamps on the side here so that it makes it easier uh, to remove and access. Um, this bottle has to be reserviced every two years so it will have to be removed from the car. So make sure you keep this accessible. Uh, you will have to disconnect the uh, release handles and the tubing. So you see the tubing here, there's gonna be one for each side. So the connectors for the tubing are very easy. You take your tubing, you just push it through the connector. When it's pushed in, you can try to pull out, it's not coming out. The day you have to remove the bottle to send it for service and you need to disconnect from here. So to remove the tubing, you have to push on this collet down to be able to push the uh, the tubing out. It's pretty hard to do by hand, so one thing I recommend is using a 13 mil socket. You push with a 13 mil socket down and then it comes out right away. That's the right diameter to push on this. To cut the tubing it's pretty easy. I'm using uh, my small uh, rear big grinder with a metal disc. Uh, then a small uh, drill bits to deeper inside and uh, just box knife cutter to cut any remaining plastic on the outer edge. So here is how it goes. Let's say I want to cut my um, tubing here. It does a nice clean cut. So you can see here I still have, might have some uh, metal left so I use the uh, drill bit to just deeper the edge there and remove any remaining metal like this. Oops. I can use a box knife cutter to cut any remaining things on the edge if there was anything. For the uh, inside the car release trigger, an easy location is if you still have the factory uh, venting. There is uh, this plastic piece that is attached to the factory, just drill a hole. Be careful, there are some reinforcement ribs, so you really want to hit for the middle here, otherwise it's not going to fit. Here you can see the backing nut in place. It's actually held up by the plastic on the edge, so it's not going to spin. And uh, you will have your quick release here in the front. So quick tip before you uh, install your uh, release cable, Put a little bit of electrical tape at the end so that you don't fray the end of the cable and then that will make a nightmare to put the stopper back on or even just slide it to uh, the retainer at the bottom. Here's what this looks like installing the car. You can see the cable here in the back. Uh, so here with everything back in place and always leave a, a little bit of uh, slack in the cable so that you can make sure the um, the key, it's working and not binding anywhere. So for the external release cable here, uh, if you look under um, the coil there, there's not much room on the driver's side with uh, the wiper uh, actuator arm and stuff to get anything through there. So here, so the coil here, coil cover, there is a enough room to get the uh, uh, rigid pipe through. Um, there is a stock grommet there, but it's too much of an angle. I tried, you see, I drilled a hole, tried to get the cable through there, 
that it was too much of a bend. So I drilled a hole under there and put another grommet so that it's uh, much more in line and there's no binding of the uh, of the uh, cable. Okay. So the cable here is going through the uh, wiring harness grommet. If you installed uh, um, a wide band or something, you, that's where you would put your cable through. So I uh, just put the cable through there and that's going to arrive behind the uh, passenger footwell. So on this car we have a pretty big air oil separator that sits just on top of the uh, grommet going in the car, but you can still uh, drill a hole here to uh, secure the release handle on the cover here, a uh, hole with a grommet. Yes, you can see the cable going here right from the grommet. So this is where the cable come from behind the firewall. The grommet is just behind the blower here. Just behind the blower. So I'm gonna put the cable here along the cage all the way to the bottom. So we, here we have the two quick release attached. This one here comes from uh, the front of the car and that's all the cable length there is. So if you were trying to put the bottle more toward the rear of the car, the cable would be too short. It's a very short cable they provide for the uh, in-car release. The the one coming from under the uh, hood, I mean, uh, for in front of the windshield, is uh, much longer. Here I looped it around and connected it at the bottom. Once I am, uh, uh, I will secure it in place and attach it to the cage on the side of the propellant. I will cut it to uh, to the propellant. So for the longer length of tubing to put in the car, I recommend to put the over braid over the tubing first with your heat shrink ready, and then uh, take a piece of electrical tape to tape that together so that you can slide everything at once. Trying to slide the overbraid after is much more painful. So here you can see uh, the electrical tape around. So now I'm going to be able to put my wire with everything attached to it. Okay, so here is the install system. Uh, we have the two hoses, one going to uh, the engine bay, the other one inside the car, and the two release cables. The uh, release cable for the inside is very short, so that the one coming here, I put it under the bottle and on the bottom one here. Uh, and the uh, one that goes on the outside is actually very long. For now, I didn't cut it, I just looped it around, uh, uh, just in case I need to uh, relocate it. But it's uh, very short for the inside one, but really long for the outside one. So here, if we follow the line, uh, they go here under the uh, uh, center console cover. So I have one line going here, um, it here with a T here just behind the console with a nozzle going on each side. There's a nozzle that we can't see here and there's another nozzle here attached to the uh, uh, footrest for the co-driver. The uh, other one goes on the other side of the shifter here so that it doesn't interfere with the shifter. So here we have the circuit going along the cage to the engine bay and here at the bottom following here and going through the center console in the form the uh, circuit going to the uh, under the dash. In this car, no footrest directly the uh, ECU plate, so bolted the uh, nozzle directly on the ECU plate. So inside I have uh, one nozzle attached to um, the co-driver footrest. So here if we look at the driver side, the nozzle is here and it's facing more this way where we have the fuel lines uh, rooted inside the cab. So the other problem with the fuel line that would spray uh, more in that direction with 180 degrees. And otherwise the, uh, it's souped up just here at the T-feedings. So it's going just there behind and uh, directly on the bracket that is attached to the console. 
Okay, here's a completed install. So here I have uh, two nozzles on the hot side, one facing towards the fuel rail and uh, the back side of the intake, the other one facing down towards the turbo and uh, the um, uh, power steering lines. Uh, you can see the line going here in the back for the other side. So the other side you can see the nozzle is right there, the yellow thing. Um, and it's facing same thing the fuel rail. I'm going to try to have a shot from the top You can see it here So the hose is rooted behind the inter intercooler coming up here and Facing towards the uh, fuel rail uh, and if there is any uh, fire coming from the uh, um, brake or clutch bowl and stuff, it's going to spray that wide area, hopefully. Um, so after that install, I'm left with that much pipe, which is about a yard of it. Uh, so here I went really shortest path for everything. You can see I have very minimal hoses for those two in here on that side it's directly at the T if you are not going so here I just went through the grommet uh, of the firewall the existing grommet if you are gonna use another hole they provide you with this uh, firewall pass through so you would put one pipe on the one side and the other pipe on the other side and and uh, screw that through the firewall to go through the firewall if you don't have a grommet. Um, so here I just passed everything, including the uh, the release cable. Everything goes through the same grommet. So here is a setup with a car with AOS. So AOS in there. The uh, uh, connector, the cross connector comes here. I have one nozzle here facing toward the fuel rail, another one that loops around uh, facing the uh, turbo downpipe or steering lines and on this side I go behind the intercooler and uh, face toward the, uh, the fuel rails, fuel lines um, and try to have a white spray pattern there. So after doing this uh, AOS setup that's all I'm left with uh, for tubing and I use this a yard, extra yard I had from the other kit so I would definitely not have had enough tubing to do the routing this way with what just was provided in the kit. And don't forget to put the uh, e-stickers next to the release when uh, you are done.